What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Club and Country, it's episode number 5 and today we're closing out October with a first versus third clash, 4 points to gap between our opponents for the first game in today's episode on the back of no wins in our last two games and a big loss in our very last game as well. Only one point clear of Victoria Cohn in second place, so heading into this one aiming to return to winning ways and as I mentioned in the last episode, I mentioned since the series began really, this is a season where there's going to be loads of goals and some shocking defending and for the first goal I don't even know how on earth I failed to put a tackle in there but I did as our opponents went 1-0 up and I was thinking my goodness gracious me worst possible start and I know you guys feel the same as me when you're using like a really lowly rated team and a really lowly rated set of players the goalkeepers in this sort of level just they're just so poor and even when they get their body in the way of a shot sometimes the ball still finds the back of the net that the equaliser there was just a bit embarrassing really. I felt kind of bad about getting back on level turns through that one there. Just shocking goalkeeping. I mean a really lucky goal but as we know luck will balance itself out. But 16 minutes in well as we know in these sort of games in this sort of tier. You're going to see loads and loads and loads of goals very very consistently in back to back games and so on and so forth. So uh, we see uh, Yeboah uh, get another one there. Make it 2-1. Put us back in front in the game and he gets his second in the game as well. 68 minutes in. But you see that goalkeeping and animation that's that's kind of what I mean I couldn't see like a Manuel Neuer doing something like that but that was just like like what's he doing like at least he just like leaps up in the air as the ball just gets smacked into the bottom corner as we go 3-1 up here get ourselves a two goal cushion courtesy of Ransford Yvonne and then in stoppage time Albert storms down the right side he's not got that much pace had enough to beat his man with a fake Rabona and to finish into the far corner as well for his first goal since coming out of the academy he's not been that good since I promoted him I'll be honest I know I do go down the wing a lot, but either way, I want to get him more involved in the goals we score. Either scoring them himself, like this one for his first of his career, or the assists as well. But four on the final score, though, the first goal just absolutely comical. Really, really lucky bounce there. But nothing comical about the other three goals. Some pretty decent attacking play in that one in a 4-1 victory. So that means we have three points clear of Victoria Cohn in second. Now six points clear of third place as well. That's a playoff place third in this division. A top two or automatic promotion uh, spots. And already 30 goals on the board as well. I mentioned this at the very beginning of the series. This is what it's like playing in these sort of divisions. Like you're going you're gonna to score goals every single game. In fact, I'd be very surprised this season. Bold statement, I know not even a third away through the campaign, but I'll be very surprised this season if we have a single goalless draw. That will be an absolute shocker if there's a stalemate in one of our third league games because, again, the standard of defending is awful. That's on both sides with me and the opponents as well. And, uh, again, the goalkeepers really are very poor. But speaking of goalkeepers here, I decided to promote one from our academy. We've got two in the academy right now, but I gave a contract to this guy, Sasha Hubner. He is an exciting prospect, 16 years old, 64 overall, 6 foot 1. I need to cha uh, train the positioning up. That's the lowest GK stat he's got. He's only 15. So I'm going to give him the sweeper keeper development plan. It'll take him 23 weeks to grow another rating, hopefully a little bit quicker if he goes into good form. As you see, our three fixtures here for November, including Kaiser Slauten away from him. They've really fallen uh, in recent years. And also um, a, a team in this year's FIFA, uh, well, consistently now for a number of years, that have my favourite badge in the game. MSV Duisburg, Duisburg, they have got my favourite badge in FIFA and also two of my favourite kits as well. They are so so cool and uh, you'll see them in the third game of the month in the fourth one today but uh, yeah sash has got the pro deal i don't know whether i'm going to throw him into the first 11 straight away i'll probably i think i'll probably share the game time with kevin between the sticks with him because as i mentioned just a moment ago there and you saw in the first game today's episode because the standard of goalkeeping is so so bad i mean you, you really do need sort of any any good goalkeeper you can get and 64 overall means you probably won't save much so yeah for the second game this episode Kaiser Slauten uh, Sasha will be on the bench for this game Kevin would start very unlucky goal to concede after we took the lead there I think there was like three blocks or two blocks and a save shot from Kevin as well yet yeah, the ball still end up in the back of the net one of those things like balance itself out as we know but right before the very got back on level uh, back in front sorry Dia Woosie I tell you man I mentioned this guy to start the save along with Ransford Yeboah I picked out these guys as the two players to watch this season they are both 
both fantastic. And I love the pace that diawoozy has got as well. Bangs one in there from close range. 2-1 Dresden. And just past the mark here. Daphna bags a brace in this one to make it 3-1. Extend our goal cushion. Make it 2. And I must say as well, Daphna, you know, he's not scored that many goals since the season began. But if we can get him to kick on, there's no reason why him and Ransford Yeboa, and possibly if we get Diawusi enough serves as well, could be like a top three in the top scorer charts because we're always going to score goals. And right now, all three of them are looking capable of banging them in on a regular basis. So 69 minutes in, Alba gets, I think, I think his first or maybe second assist is coming out of the academy as Finn Ole Becker gets his second goal for the club's signing from St. Pauli. And that was how the game would finish. So 4 1 away at Kaiser Slatter again. I think, I think Kaiser Slatter have fallen from grace in recent years. I might be thinking of another team, but I swear very recently they were in the Bundesliga. Maybe I'm thinking of someone else, but anyway. Beat my four goals to one there, so back to back, 4-1 victories. And again, yeah, another game about a clean sheet. We won't keep many this season, that is for sure. But uh, still, for the third game of today's episode, I did decide to put Sasha in goal for this one and hand the debut to the young 16-year-old goalkeeper and see how he will get on here. Uh, not much going on in the game until 53 minutes in. Daphne gets another third goal in two for our number 33. So again, if we can get him to kick on, he's definitely going to reach double digits this year, along with Ransford Yuboa that's already there. And then 11 minutes for full time, still leading by one. Must admit, wasn't really troubled much in this game. It was Diawisi sent forward down the left hand side, rolls it across, and there is Stefaniak to bang it in from close range since coming off the bench. I was going to be a little bit selfish there with Diawisi, try and give him another goal, but I played it across the face to goal, go to the man on loan, and he makes it 2 0 as we go three straight wins, and exactly what we needed as well on the back of no wins in our last two games. Heading into today's episode, had to make sure he returned with three straight wins, and we did indeed. But for the fourth game of today's episode, now this is the team I was mentioning earlier, MSV. Duisburg. Tell me this is not a sick badge. I mean, come on now. That zebra, the blue and white, that looks absolutely class. And the kits are amazing as well, both their home and away kit. When we played a reverse fixture um, in the second half of the season, I'll make sure I show you the away kit. It's class. It looks absolutely sick. And I'll be honest here, the two teams I was considering most to do this club and country with were, unsurprisingly, Dynamo Dresden, who we chose, and also MSV Duisburg as well. The, the kits and the badge are absolutely sick. I used to have them on all my team when I used to play UT. But um, yeah, they look absolutely amazing. So I was excited for this game just to see what the kits would look like on the pitch. But uh, we fell behind early uh, through Boo Hadoo. So some of you guys might remember if you've been here for a while. Uh, firstly, thank you. You might remember Boo Hadoo. Dues was our starting striker in our St. Pauli career mode in Season 1. Talk about a blast from the past, man, and talk about a blast from the present as well after we found our level of four minutes before the break. Ransford, your boa bang. This guy, this guy's finishes are just so accurate, man. I barely ever missed a target with our number 35, and that's why he's the top scorer in the league right now. So, 2-1 Dresden. Whenever whenever Ransford, your boa goes through a 1-1, one -one, man, just forget about it. He's so clinical. He's going to finish every single chance. So, came from a Behind the lead, 2-1 to Dynamo Dresden, but 18 minutes before the end of the game, uh, Duisburg would find themselves a leveler. Once again, some pretty comical defending, I'll be honest here, but look how cool these kits here, man. I'm sorry, I keep on going on about it, but look how cool these kits are, man. I tell you, if you're looking for an RTG save uh, in Germany, and starting from the bottom tier, the third tier, definitely give Duisburg a go, man, because again, the kits and the badge look absolutely amazing. So despite the stuff up there, uh, still six points clear at the top of the table right now with 22 games to go. Still the league's top scorer as well. Again, defensively, that is a problem. Only one clean sheet, I believe, in our last five, maybe six games. So that is, of course, at the moment, our weakness. Um, but it's exactly why I expected. You know, I said at the very start of the series, you know, playing a free at the back system, I'm not too familiar and not too confident playing a free at the back system. And obviously, as well, when you take into, uh, take into consideration that the goalkeepers are really, really poor at this level, the standard defending is really poor, the AI marking, both for your. Um, your AI controlled uh, defenders and also the opponent defenders as well is always going to be pretty pretty poor. Yeah, you should expect to see a lot of goals in practically every single game. It's exactly what's been happening throughout the course of the season so far so I'm pretty confident that will be remaining the case all the way through our first season. So for the following game here, uh, first one December on the back of a scouting update and academy update as well. I did put a couple more players in the academy. You might notice I'm being very selective with the players we put in the youth squad and again the, the most important reason is quite simple. 
I don't want to fill out the squad with players that simply aren't going to make it. We had a problem in our Cork save when we had too many players in our squad, too many youth players coming through, many of which did not show potential. And in the end, because we didn't have enough space to promote youth players, we lost like a golden generation of Cork City players. I don't want the same thing to happen uh, in this save as well. So I'm going to be very, very selective with the players going to our academy. Unless I believe they've got showing great potential at the absolute bare minimum, mostly exciting prospect upwards, then I'm probably not going to get them an academy academy scholarship it, it really does pay to be very very selective with the youth players because you know you might find when you're doing youth scouting you might lose a player a player might get poached away to another club's academy but honestly it's worth the risk it's worth the gamble the worst thing you want to do is put loads of youth players in your academy many of which don't show any potential whatsoever you give them pro deals because they're threatening to terminate their contracts and in the end they just never end up playing for you they take up space and you can you struggle to sell them basically and uh, you can only release two per season as well so yeah it pays to be selective when you're doing your youth scouting in FIFA career mode. Still, with the first game of December here, we were 3-1 down in this game. Really frustrating. We fell behind, found 11, and in two goals saw our opponents go 3-1 up. And I was thinking this will be our first home defeat of the season so far. But as I've been mentioning all throughout the course of, well, the episode as well as the season so far as well, at this division, you're never out of a game no matter what deficit you're in because the standard of defending a goalkeeper is that bad. You're always going to get multiple chances. We found ourselves route back into the game through Diawusi. Then with eight minutes to go, Ransford Yubala goes through one on one and fires in our level as we battle back once again in uh, two separate occasions to battle back from 3 1 down to claim a point here at home and maintain our unbeaten home start here. In, uh, in Dresden. So yeah, 3-3 free -free to final score. They're two late goals in 17 minutes rescuing us in a 3-3 free -free draw. And that's kind of the thing that I, I both love and hate about this division. You know, it means that when you've got like a lead of two goals, you're still not safe. Like two or three goals, you'd think normally in like a higher division with a better standard of defending, you're going to be fine. You'll see out the game easily. But at this level, you're not safe regardless of what type of lead you got. But again, it, it also works in your favour in the games when you're trailing as well. In that game, 3-1 down. If we're playing the Bundesliga, forget about it. Wave the white flag and walk off. It's over. You're not going to get that many chances against the AI's defence on ultimate. But at this level, it's like the AI standard of defending is not ultimate. It's like semi-pro. So, you know, you're probably going to get at least one or two more chances uh, every 10 in-game minutes. So, uh, yeah, 3-3 free -free to final score there. And uh, for our penultimate, sorry, final game of this episode here, uh, travelling away from home. 15 minutes in. Now, this is what I'm always talking about, man. Luck will balance itself out. Remember the very start of the episode, the first goal we scored today? Super lucky goal. Well, for this one, super unlucky. Header off the line and hits Sasha on the back as the hosts go in front and Victoria Cole and take the lead. That's that's FIFA. That's football. That's life. Luck will balance itself out. Hashtag Docs the Philosopher. So, yeah, 1-0 down, courtesy of a very unlucky goal but five minutes for the break back on level terms. Who's there to rescue us once again? Ransford Yeboah. Oh, Ransford Yeboah. Love this guy, man. 1-1 uh, and our number 35 gets us back on level terms and then just past the hour mark here. Go Going through one on one. I've got to be honest here. Felt kind of bad about doing this. You know me, I don't cut the ball across the face of the goal and going through one on one very often. But for this moment here, taking on the promotion rival away from home. Really wanted the three points. Regardless of how we got them, I really wanted the three points to try and pull away. So a cutback goal there is Daphna makes it 2-1. Gets in front for the first time in the game. And there were 12 minutes to go. Well, I mentioned him earlier in the episode. He's the Robin to Ransford Yeboah's Batman. But every hero, every star needs a psychic. Daphna, I do believe this season, can definitely get to double digits. He's almost there, actually. And uh, can definitely be a really good, reliable source of goals. And Ransford Yeboah is not bagging them in. So I strike duel with the three goals in this one. Three the final score as we come from behind to get a big big victory there against Victoria Cohen and that means as you look at the league table one game away from the halfway point we now open up a seven point gap on Victoria Cohen yes defensively we have been shaky but 44 goals already in 18 games I'm pretty confident as we approach the second half of the season our offensive firepower will be the main reason we can stay in the top two automatic promotion places hopefully touch wood all season long but that will end today's episode of Club and Country guys we can thank you for watching hope you have enjoyed it if you have then please drop a like most of you all have a fantastic day and i'll see you for the next episode of c and c as we get to the halfway stage and the january transfer window opens as well very soon